Hi, this is Dr. Reverend William J. Plank. And today is Sunday. I'm going to read to you what is called the Word of the Living God, the source of Christian doctrine. We believe that the scripture of the Old and New Testament are given by inspiration of God and that they only constitute the divine rule of Christian faith and practice. The first articles of the faith identify the Bible as a source of both Christian faith and Christian practice. Our faith, therefore, finds its definition and defense in Scripture. The history of doctrines demonstrates the way of which the Church has understood, interpreted, and communicated biblical truth. The first article is a primarily, a primarily statement and establishes the Bible as a source book of Christian doctrine. The Bible is a book written by many writers. It has a human document. It is a human document but we believe that it is also God's Word, 1 Thessalonians 2.13. It carries God's authority, is the revealer of truth, and the guide for Christian living, 2 Timothy 3.16, verse 17. In its page, we encounter the living God of history, and from its teachings, we learn to live in the relationship with Him. Ladies and gentlemen, the key point here is we learn to live in a relationship with God. The Word of God is a path. Psalms 119.11 says, The Word is a path unto my feet and a light unto my path. God has a path like a tunnel that leads to heaven. But in the secular world, the world, especially in the United States, which is one of the most challenging places of of following God in the world because we are multi. Obama gave a proclamation today that we are trying to reestablish the foundation of our country. We need to. We need to. The First Amendment does not give you the freedom to do anything you want. People misinterpret the First Amendment. It says that God gave you the freedom to worship God as you choose. If you're choosing to worship God, then you automatically know that God is only one faith, one truth, one church. Period. And that faith title, the one and only truth, is Hebrews 7.17. 7, God said, Jesus made a decree and he shall not repent. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek in Hebrew means kings of right. This is the word of God, ladies and gentlemen. Then he commissioned you, Joshua 1.8 says, You will study my word and meditate on it night and day. Night and day means twice a day. You are commanded by life's ruler to study his word twice a day. And if you only study it once a day, then you're under a curse. You're not obeying God. You have to study it twice a day. And 2 Timothy 2.15 says, study to show yourself worthy. You have to continue to study it until you are showing God your worthiness. This is not a freedom that, well, I don't want to do that. There's only heaven and hell. You either obey God or you disobey God. Ezekiel chapter 33, 1 through 10 will show you that when the watchman, which I am a watchman, I'm telling you what I'm seeing here in the Word and the Spirit. When God comes to the watchman and tells the watchman, Watchman, show them what you see. If I don't show you what I see, then God's going to punish me. Read it, Ezekiel 33, 1 through 10. But if I show you and then you don't obey what I show you, the punishment goes on you and not me. This is the Word of God. The secular world and the mortal world teaches all kinds of crazy things are going on. We are one mind. In the first chapter of Isaiah, you will see that the mind, according to the Word of God, the prophet Isaiah said, You people have failed me. Your people have rejected me and therefore your mind is ill when God is speaking of the mind he's talking about the whole planet earth is the church 
The whole planet Earth is the church. The whole planet Earth is one brain that has to heal, which means the whole multitude of people have to think alike. One mind operating the whole body. But in this First Amendment, people have distortedly disobeyed God and have distorted it. Well, I could be a Muslim and I can be... Um, I could be a Jehovah's Witness, and I could be this, and I could be that. Listen, people. Every single religion is designed to point you to Jesus. Yeshua, Yahweh. Everything is designed to bring you to the one mind. If you're, if you're studying something and you're practicing something that's not doing that, then you are not in conjunction with your government. And the God who created us said, you are commanded to obey the law of the land. The law of the land is supposed to also be in subjection to the church, pointing you to Jesus. And until we can get that figured out, until we can get everyone to do this, there's going to be chaos and crime. Crime is caused by um, an impurity of the mind and the heart. When all people are thinking alike, then what seems to be a crime no longer exists because everyone's doing what everyone else is thinking. But if you're not thinking correctly, then you are going to have conflictions with those who do not agree with your thinking. This is the Word of God. Christ said we are to be of one mind, one faith, one church. That means every government is to also be in subjection to the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments of God, Exodus chapter 21 through 17, will show you. There's more than Ten Commandments in this doctrine of law, but the Ten Commandments are what we call the Big Ten. Every single mind in Jesus has to be in subjection to those Ten Commandments, not only now, but forever. For all eternity. The Word of God is eternal. And people people say, well, when I die, I'm going to be sucking margaritas and laying around on a cloud. That's not so. Six days you labor, seventh day you rest forever. If the Word of God is eternal and will go on forever and ever and ever, then you will be obeying it in the same way you are now forever and ever and ever and ever. Your work ethics may be adjusted, but you will still be laboring forever and ever and ever. This is the Word of God. Thank you.